Cruise news time. What's the deal? What is it? Is it is it good times or is it bad times for cruising right now? We've got uh, another story of the supply chain issues causing the delay of a brand new cruise ship. But at the same time, I, I got a story about a cruise port that hosted an amazing amount of people in one day. How many... Let's just say Nassau, Bahamas. That's what we're going to talk about. How many people do you think they could host in one day? What do you think a record-breaking day is for Nassau, Bahamas? And also, uh, there's a world cruise where the cabins cost probably more than most people's houses that sold out before the thing even opened up. So are we worried about cruising? Because it seems like some people still got a lot of money for cruising. And also, uh, let's jump into this debate. If you buy a drink package... Should they limit the amount of drinks you can have, or, or should it be unlimited, or should they limit it more? Cruise news. Let's talk about it. Hey, 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 what's up, everybody? Welcome to La Lido Loca. I'm your host, Tony, here with the latest cruise news updates. Well, welcome to what I think is a pretty good show today. Welcome to Friday, and uh, I guess that is the theme of the show. Uh, cruising, is it is it good or is it bad right now? Are things going good for the industry or going bad for the industry? And we'll tailor some of these shows around that. Now, yesterday I threw out the show about the stockholder benefit, and uh, I was kind of riding the high. I knew it was going to be short-lived. We had one day this past week where the cruise stocks rose a little bit, well, man, they ate a big poop sandwich yesterday, and uh, now they're down in the doldrums, maybe at like the lowest some of these cruise line stocks have been in 52 weeks. But the point of the show was yesterday that if you did own 100 shares of cruise stock in one of these companies, you could get a stockholder benefit, and it could be possibly a good time to get in on that. Again, stock market's risky. That's something you're going to have to do. But a lot of great comments yesterday. And uh, during those comments, a couple things were reiterated that I said in the show. Remember, if you're going to try to do the stockholder benefit, you got to make sure that it works with any other discounts that you have. And then a couple people pointed out, make sure that if you are ex-military or current military, if you're military, uh, make sure you check the cruise lines for a military discount. Uh, I, I, for some reason, I would assume that anybody in the military would be asking for that, but maybe not. So I, that's a good reminder out there to the community uh, when you're booking your cruise. Check for discounts, like for military discounts, uh, in addition to your stockholder benefits. All that stuff. Who, who knows what the stock's going to do today? Uh, you know, I don't know, but, but we'll continue to watch it. Uh, is the stock an indicator of how the cruise industry is going, or is it an indicator of how this, everything's going? So, uh, it, you know, it may not be just localized to the cruise industry, the, you know, negative stock trend. So there's that. But then the other thing that we, we hear about that may suggest that things aren't going good for the cruise industry is the supply chain issues that's causing the delay of cruises, the uh, new cruise ships to uh, get into the world. We know for sure that uh, Margaritaville at sea, that was that had to debut later than it was going to. We've heard about Virgin Voyage's Resilient Lady that was supposed to debut in 2022, now will not debut until 2023. We also know that the new Disney Cruise Line ship, the Disney Wish, was delayed, the NCL Prima delayed, and now we have word coming out that the next in the NCL Prima class, the NCL Viva, will be delayed. NCL Viva was supposed to debut in June of 2023. All the June 2023 bookings have been canceled, and now the NCL Viva will debut in July in Europe next year uh, for Norwegian Cruise Line. So uh, again, these cruise lines continue to cite issues with supply chain, which is connected to broader issues that we're having in the world. So is this a, you know, is this a bad mark on the cruise industry, or are they just uh, dealing with the world in which they find themselves uh, you know, regardless of if it's the cruise industry or if it's the external, uh, you know, factors that are causing these challenges for the cruise industry, if some of these factors don't right themselves, that could mean trouble long term. But, uh, you know, again, uh, in the midst of all of these challenging stories, we have a whole series of stories that are fantastical, like record-breaking stories. Case in point, let me tell you about June the 12th, just a few days ago at the cruise port of Nassau, Bahamas. Uh, on that day, the Norwegian Sky, the Carnival Conquest, the Carnival Magic, the Carnival Freedom, Royal Caribbean's Freedom of the Seas, and Royal Caribbean's Independence of the Seas all docked in Nassau, Bahamas, unleashing into Nassau 
20,210 cruise passengers in one day. Holy moly macaroni salad on a table with peas in it. Who likes that? That is a lot of people in a cruise port. How many cruise ships was that? Let's see. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. Six cruise ships in in one day. And what's significant is that's really the one-year anniversary where the Adventure of the Seas, one of the you know first cruises in North America to help restart cruising in North America that I was on, that was like the one-year anniversary. So it's in my mind. I can see it in my mind's eye. I can see the Adventure of the Seas sitting there at the Nassau dock, which there's a lot of construction. It didn't look like anything I remembered from pre-pandemic. A lot of the stuff had been torn down. And I just remember walking up on Adventure of the Seas, thinking, wow, we're back, baby. Cruising is back. And so then fast forward one year, and uh, you know, a year later, six cruise ships dropping 20,000 people off in Nassau. It's a testimony to how far the cruise restart has come in the last year. And so you start to balance this out, the challenges uh, plus the victories. And uh, I know we're getting close to when, you know, like, uh, the end of Q2, and pretty soon we'll have Q2 reporting, and it will be interesting to see how the cruise lines are doing going forward. But, it, yeah, it's hard to balance. As a cruise fan, as somebody that's going to continue to go on cruise ships, I'm encouraged by this NASA story. I'm concerned by the supply issues, but I'm also, you know, we're still seeing new cruise ships come on board. We're seeing more and more staffing events, and so it, it does seem like we're on an upward trajectory but it's like, uh, you know, we're climbing up a steep hill is what it feels like. But if that Nassau story wasn't enough to blow your mind, I, I got to tell you this other story. Again, people spending more money on a balcony cabin than uh, uh, people spend on houses. This, before we get there, let me quickly invite you to subscribe. If you like to stay up to date with everything that's going on in cruising. I'm so excited. I can't even remember the, the, the I'm trying to invite you. That's up to date. With everything that's going on in cruising, please consider subscribing with the notification bell on. Uh, that way you don't miss out on these episodes. Look, I, I want to be your cruise guy. I want to be your all things cruising guy. That's the commitment I'm making to you. Uh, there's a lot of other great people to watch. And so give me 15 minutes a day if you can. Give everybody else some time. But if you want to stay up to date with everything that's going on in that cruise life, uh, the Tony B's got you. Uh, I'm your ride or die. How about that? It's like watching Yellowstone. Uh, here's a picture of me on a horse when I was a kid. I'm a cowboy. All right. Uh, subscribe, notification bell. Uh, thank you in advance. So listen to this. Two days ago was June the 15th. The much anticipated Regent Seven Seas World Cruise for 2025. This is a 150 night sailing going to 97 ports of call in 25 countries uh, spanning a total distance of 36,295 nautical miles. Five continents, I believe, that it's going to. All your shore excursions are free. This thing was supposed to go on sale uh, on the 15th of June. Well, when the 15th of June rolled around, the thing was already sold out. Pre-sales were offered to uh, existing customers and uh, invite other customers. And so about a third of the people are going to be brand new on this thing. And then the rest of it are going to be loyal Regent Seven Seas customers. And the whole thing was sold out uh, on June the 15th when it opened to the public for booking. Now, the cheapest cabin for this cruise is the Veranda Suite. And that clocked in at $86,999. $86,999 for the cheap cabin. What? And if you are curious as to what the top end was, well, the nicest suite on the ship went for $249,999. A cool quarter of a million dollars for a 150 night sailing. Um, man, and it sold out. Uh, I guess rich people have money still in, in these tumultuous times. How about that? I think it's fair to say anybody that booked any of these cabins would have to be considered rich, right? I mean, wow. Wow. And just a quick shout out to the mega rich out there. If you need kind of a, you know, a jovial, chubby 50 year old with a, you know, a semi decent gray beard to, uh, you know, be your son or something, I'm, I'm down. Just uh, give me a call. How about that? All right, so I realize a story like that's either going to make you go, wow, that's a great opportunity. Maybe someday I could be mega rich. Or it's going to drive you to drinking. And so let's talk about drinking. Let's talk about drinking on a cruise ship. I've been following a thread on social media where there's been some people that are pretty adamant 
that they don't feel like they're uh, getting their money's worth for their drink package. And so uh, when you go on a cruise, you have the opportunity on many cruise lines to buy a drink package. And on some cruise lines, uh, if it's an alcoholic drink package, you can drink as many alcoholic drinks as you want uh, during the whole cruise. doesn't matter. They don't put a counter on you or anything like that. However, there are some cruise lines that do limit the amount of alcoholic drinks you can have, even when you buy a drink package. I think many of us know the number 15. That is a, a number that is used in the, the Carnival family. When you have a drink package, a Princess will limit you to 15. Carnival Cruise Line will limit you to 15. And you're not allowed to have any more than 15 alcoholic beverages in a day. And I've seen some people push back against that, saying that 15 drinks is not enough drinks in a day. Uh, if you want to you know, get your money's worth out of the drink package, you have to start drinking early. And so I've seen a very detailed list from people like, I drink a couple mimosas and a Bloody Mary at breakfast. And then I, you know, I have some, some beers and cocktail at lunch. And then when I go to dinner, I always have a couple glasses of wine. And then when I go out at night, I have some more cocktails. And 15 cocktails a day, 15 alcoholic beverages a day is not doing it. Now, the flip side of that is like, how many drinks do you want somebody to have? And it's interesting in this world because there's people that have different tolerances to alcohol. Like, there's no way I could drink 15 drinks in a day. I am a casual drinker. Sometimes on a particularly hot day or depending what kind of food I'm eating, I might like to have a beer. Uh, sometimes in the casino when I'm gambling, I might like to have a white Russian. There's nothing more manly than drinking a milk drink while you're throwing some hot dice. Am I right? Did somebody just get excited over my milk drink at the craps table? Look, like, I don't really drink. And so for me, 15 drinks a day seems way out of, like, who could drink 15 drinks a day? But I know that there's other people that have a drinking lifestyle that maybe 15 drinks a day is not enough. So that's the question. Uh, should they limit drinks to 15 drinks a day? Is 15 drinks too many or is 15 drinks a day not enough? Should the cruise line get out of our drinking business? It's, it could be a safety issue, all kinds of stuff like that. Uh, leave a comment below. Boom, that is your show today. Time for you to sound off. What do you think about all these stories? Is the cruise industry in trouble or are they just going through a rocky patch? I would love to hear your opinion down in the comments. Thank you so much for checking out the show today. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, you can show your support for it that you enjoyed it by hitting the like button. And unfortunately, if you do not hit the like button, I'll be forced to punish you. And your punishment will be this. On your next cruise, if you are a drinker, uh, there won't be any drinks available except white Russians. That's right. Everybody's going to walk around the ship carrying around baby milky drinks. How about that? You don't want that. Hit the like button. It's Tony for La Lido Look. Until the next time, we'll see you on the Lido.